Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Now, this is something pretty different for us. We don't typically cover these workstation GPUs on the channel because the truth is, we've never been sent one of these for review, which is why when AMD asked, hey, do you wanna check out this new Radeon Pro W6800? I said yes, and the reason why is because I wanted to learn more about this GPU and share what I found with this GPU. So let's jump in. To kick this off, we've got no idea about availability or whether or not you'll be able to get your hands on the Radeon Pro W6800 at all, and not because of stock, but because of how workstation GPUs are typically just harder to get anyways. We're here to show you what we found with the W6800. The other difficult factor is with this card is uh, it's pretty hard to compare it to a regular gaming focused GPU since that's what we traditionally cover. This is just about the first workstation GPU that we've ever covered on the channel. So we don't have performance numbers for any of the Quadro cards or anything like that because we've just never had them. And that's not saying that the W6800 is the first workstation GPU I've ever used. I've just never really talked about them before. With that said, we did this one slightly differently because there's far more to cover outside of this video that I wanna revisit over time. Now, the truth is I've been working on this video for about five days, although it actually might not seem that way. We did the best we could with the time we had available to give you guys the numbers we found with the Radeon Pro W6800. And to make your lives easier as well, like this is with all of our videos across the whole channel, we've got chapters in all our videos. So if you wanna to jump to a certain section of the video, just mouse over that progress bar or check the timestamps in the description. But at the same time, I want you guys to watch this whole video if you can, just to get the context of what I'm trying to say with the W6800. So with all that aside, let's talk about the specs for a minute because this might be something you find interesting if the W6800 is something you're looking at using for your workloads. The W6800 is based on the RDNA2 architecture and more specifically a Navi 21 GPU with 60 compute units. As for FP32 performance, it sits pretty close to 18 teraflops and peak FP32 performance since it's sitting just above 19 teraflops. You can see the other floating point information on your screen right now. As far as memory, it's equipped with 32 gigs of GDDR6 with ECC and 128 megs of AMD Infinity Cache. The Radeon Pro W6800 features full hardware-based AV1 decoding and is also capable of real-time ray tracing like its desktop Focus 6800 XT counterpart. The W6800 can be used with smart access memory or with resizable bar and is fully PCIe 4.0 compliant. Power is delivered via a 6x8 pin PCIe power connector on the end of the card. The maximum board power puts it at around 250 watts of maximum board power draw, but we saw different numbers, which is something we're gonna come back to a little bit later. As far as display connectivity, the W6800 features six mini display port connectors on the card itself. For testing, we used our regular GPU test bench for some of the testing as noted in the bottom of the graphs. We use this test bench for most of our GPU tests. However, given the nature of this GPU, a majority of the testing was done with our Threadripper Pro test bench, which is running the Threadripper Pro 3975WX on the Gigabyte WRX80 SU8 with both Windows and Linux. These benchmarks are quite different from what you're used to seeing from us, and it's really only based on what we could observe with the W6800 since we don't have any other workstation class GPUs. However, we do have some numbers provided from AMD without context, so take those results in with a grain of salt. All right, let's start out with Spec ViewPerf 13. We saw the same performance in both Windows and Linux, so there's no benefit to using Windows or Linux for these tests, and we ran these tests at both 1080p and at 4K. 1080p is an interesting one, since we don't have any comparisons to make, and I'm sure those who know about these cumulative results will understand that the performance here is fairly decent. This might confuse users who are used to seeing game FPS, but as you're about to see with the 4K benchmarks, where we have some data provided, which if it's to be believed, would make the W6800 faster than the Turing based Quadro RTX 5000. Now I'm showing this graph here that has little to no context to show you what numbers we recorded on these same tests so you can calculate the difference between the GPUs based on AMD's percentages. Again, oh, this is just something that you got to take with a grain of salt because I don't have a Quadro RTX 
5,000. So yeah, I'm just sharing what was provided to me. Next up is Blender. Now this one is pretty interesting. We used the Blender benchmarking application to test the W6800 with OpenCL to render the scenes. And then we opened those scenes in Blender and re-rendered them with AMD's ProRender 2.0 to see what performance differences we would see. And this is where it gets pretty interesting. First up with an overall graph with CUDA and OpenCL results from both Nvidia and AMD GPUs. Yes, I know about testing the Nvidia GPUs with optics, but yeah, this was just to give the BMW scene a little bit of context and the W6800 a little bit of context as well. Bear with me here, there's a reason for it. Now let's look at the OpenCL results from every Blender benchmark scene with the Radeon Pro W6800. The results here are okay. However, when we open these benchmarks up in Blender with ProRender installed, we can see that the render performance of the same scenes are much better with the exception of the Victor scene, which would crash Blender out on every run with ProRender. These things happen. Also, just to add to that, our testing was done with pre-release drivers, so this might be the issue that we saw here as well. Lastly, if we look at these results side by side, you can see a little bit of uplift here. And by a little bit, I mean quite a bit in certain benchmarks. We did some additional testing with Luxmark, which is an OpenCL based benchmarking application. We used version 3.1 and 4.0 alpha, and it gives us a score which doesn't have much context. However, what Luxmark does is shows us how long each of these scenes takes to render. I hope this testing provided a level of understanding for what the W6800's intended use case is. Now, I know it's not as detailed as some of the other tests that we do here on the channel, but we can only work with what we've got. The next question you might ask yourself is, <laughs> you guys are gonna ask this, right? What's gaming performance like? And I know it's not the intended use case for these cards, but come on, it's a GPU. We're gonna see how it runs our regular benchmarks that we do in Windows and Linux. So, Let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Next up, Unigen Superposition. The same way we always do it, 4K optimized, 1080p extreme, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. And lastly, Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in both Windows and Linux.
As for thermals, we ran our one hour stress test in Ida 64 and we couldn't get the W6800 above 88 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. Now, this result is actually acceptable, but we are running on an open air test bench. The results in your system, which is probably gonna be a closed system, will be far different from what we observed here. Now we include this result because our open air test environment is consistent with everything that we've ever tested across the board with every GPU. One thing to note here though, is with these workstation GPUs, they have far higher thermal tolerances and you can run at these temperatures for their entire life. That's what they're designed to do. As for power consumption, we observed it hitting around 212 watts at full load over our stress testing period. This is a little bit lower than the advertised 250 watt power draw. And we tested this a few ways and we saw the same results within a margin of error. So yeah, 250 is at the absolute peak but 212 is what we observed over a long period of time. As for the car's design, it's a two slot blower card and it's not huge for the sake of being huge. I measured it, it's approximately 268 millimeters in length and should fit in most systems quite well. And because this is a reference card only, there's no board partners. So this is the only one you can get. This is the only way it looks. And I think this big blue shiny GPU uh, looks pretty awesome. I, I like it. I mean, the truth is it doesn't really matter because you're probably never going to see this GPU if you're using it for its intended use case, but the color is quite striking. Yeah. I've never seen anything quite like that. What do you reckon, Claire? Yeah. It's uh, it, it's a lot. As for the last generation Radeon Pro 7, the W6800 is boasting double the VRAM, with apparently 36% more performance for 350 US dollars more than the previous generation, which leads me into the last thing I wanted to talk about, the price. If you're interested in getting your hands on a Radeon Pro W6800, you're looking at spending around 2,250 US dollars. And I know this sounds like a lot of money and with the current GPU market and whatever's happening in the world right now, but you have to take into account what this GPU is actually used for, high-end professional workloads. You're also getting 32 gigs of GDDR6 memory with ECC. The Radeon Pro W6800 has a lot of great things going for it as long as you remember that. Although, this GPU can be used for gaming, but that's not where this GPU excels. If you're using the W6800 for things like Maya, 3ds Max, Blender, Houdini, AutoCAD, this thing's gonna be a beast. And that's exactly what it's designed for. But let us know what you think about the W6800. I think it's pretty interesting for what it is. And let us know if you want to see more workstation based hardware and we'll do our darndest to get our hands on some of these and build some crazy workstations and build up a workstation GPU uh, database. Let, me, let us know if that's something you actually want to see us do. I also wanted to talk about something that I noticed with these Radeon Pro GPUs in Linux and I wasn't going to talk about this but I think this is really important feedback for AMD. Now traditionally AMD has been pretty good at supporting the latest GPUs in Linux with their open source driver branch. In fact the W6800 worked out of the box with Ubuntu 21.04. However a lot of the important Pro features can't be used with those drivers. Now you can install the proprietary drivers. You either have to use a different kernel or Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. Even that in itself is a headache because it's pretty hit and miss. Most of the time you have to downgrade the kernel for that to work properly, which is an absolute nightmare if you're not versed in doing that. I already spoke to AMD about this, but I need to bring awareness to this in the public. AMD needs to be a lot more flexible with its pro drivers in Linux. Linux is all about choice and I don't feel like there's any choice with the current state of drivers. That just doesn't make sense to me considering the rest of their drivers are open source and easy to use. Now, we've got a few other videos planned with the W6800 and I wanna test it in some real applications with people who know how to use these GPUs for their job. Now, I'm not giving anything away right now, but this one coming up should be a load of fun. Anyways, guys, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. If you hated the video, hit the dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick, with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. Now, this video, uh, we, we had, we, we, would did, we did a lot more Linux testing than we showed in this video, which is why it took so long. But with, like I said, with the pro drivers, with this thing in Linux and the state of uh, being given choice with drivers, yeah, it, it actually wasted a lot of our time. In Windows, this thing works no problem, but yeah, we did 
not waste, but we did learn a lot of things that we're going to cover again when uh, we get time to reset up our Threadripper Pro Linux test bench as well. So yeah, all a good learning experience, but it did take quite a while to get this video out and probably not what you guys are expecting, but I enjoyed learning more about this. Let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.